Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Michael Hayes and in this series we are helping you guys out there prepare for the Texas EC6 Subject Core Exam as you prepare to become a Texas educator. We're looking at the subject of science right now and in this episode we're looking at notable scientists. We are drilling down to the ones you need to know most as you prepare for your exam coming up next. Okay, if this is the first video you've seen in this series and you would like to check out my past or future episodes, you can click on this card right here. It will take you to my playlist. That playlist will actually have all the episodes in the order they were taught and by topic so you can drill down and really get to what you need for your exam and preparing. Um, if you cannot see the card that I pointed to because your browser doesn't show it, you can check the description below. I will have a link there as well. And I will also have a link to the Big Yellow Book. The Big Yellow Book is a great resource for teachers. Uh, or for future teachers preparing for the Texas exam and then I'll have additional resources in the description so please check that out um, in the description. Now um, I want to give a shout out to some people uh, that have been, uh, encouraged me <laughs> along the way or they've be, been commenting on past episodes and so uh, I want to first shout out to Ben Harold. Uh, ben is a guy I actually work with. He's one of our aides at our school where I work and uh, man he really encourages me. He was the first one to comment on one of my videos uh, he is working to get his teacher certification, and so thanks, Ben, for watching. Uh, hopefully, you're watching this episode too, where uh, you know I'm just kind of praising you for uh, your encouragement. Uh, for some others out there, Joanna H uh, Hernandez, uh, thank you for watching. Um, I know that you were taking your test soon. I don't know if you've taken it yet or not, but I really uh, support you. I thank you for watching. Thanks for commenting, and I wish I would have started the series earlier to help you out. But hopefully, what you've seen so far has been a you know been a help to you. Also to Ruben Meza and Eddie Torres, thank you for commenting on my videos. It really encourages me as a YouTuber. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard when you don't see likes or subscribers coming off your videos and you just kind of wonder if your efforts are in vain. So, you know, comments help me to uh, keep going. So if you have not commented before and you're watching and these are helping, please make a comment before, below. Positive comments are great, but if you have something that I can uh, increase or better these videos, please let me know. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Um, so we're going to get start with five minutes on the clock. I don't know that I'm going to make it in five minutes. This is actually about our third or fourth take on this and uh, I keep going past. So I'm going to go ahead and put five minutes up so we can kind of keep an eye on it. But I, I will probably go longer in this video just kind of give you a heads up because I would like to wrap all these scientists up in one video, okay? So we'll go ahead and start with five minutes. We'll see how we do. Okay, the first guy I want to talk about is Charles Darwin. Now, Charles Darwin, uh, I'm not a big fan, but you know what? That's my own, my own personal belief system that kind of gets in the way of things, I guess, when it comes to him. But he lived in 1808 from 1909. He is an English scientist that was a naturalist, and uh, he was an environmentalist and so on. And so he went to the Galapagos Islands to check out uh, species of animals that were living in the area because it was isolated from other land masses. And he started noticing that the finch population, they were a type of bird that still lives today, uh, that there's 15 different species on the island that he, uh, you know, came to the idea that those species of finches must have evolved from an original finch and that their beak shapes were primarily the big difference so that they could ascertain different uh, food sources. And so um, his whole idea was that Animals compete for the same resources and those that are more fit to survive will outlive the others and be able to pass on their traits to uh, create stronger species in the future. I don't disagree with that. That's called natural selection. Where I have a problem with is cross-species uh, evolution. But, you know, again, personal beliefs, you may have a different belief and uh, you know what, that's, that's good too. But he came up with the origin of species in 1859 that kind of broke away from the idea of God created all uh, life on this planet. And so, uh, anyway, that is Charles Darwin, big guy you need to know about. Next guy we're going to talk about is Gregor Mendel. He was a monk that lived from 1822 to 1844. And he, uh, as most monks, they are pretty much quiet to themselves. They find a hobby they're interested in. And his was agriculture. He liked uh, growing pea plants. And pea plants was a really great species because it has very few traits that it passes on to its offspring. And so in the proce process of him... Uh, growing these plants, he started seeing these different traits being passed on, whether it was flower color or seed shape or size of plant or number of leaves and so on. So he started keeping records and he started realizing he could predict uh, basically what types of plants would come from the parents. And so he was credited with being the, the father of genetics. Now, still on the scene in the early 1900s after him came a guy named Reginald Punnett. 
He was an English scientist that took Gring uh, Gregor's uh, work to the next level. He came up with a Punnett square that allowed us to predict the probability of traits being passed from uh, parent to offspring, whether that's animals or plants. doesn't really matter. It works great. And uh, he came up with uh, um, basically genotypes, phenotypes. Phenotypes is what the physical characteristics look like. The genotype is what's in the genes that per allows that to go and be seen in the phenotype. Next on the scene comes James Watson. He uh, was born in 1928. He is still living today. He is an American scientist. And then his partner, Francis Crick, an English scientist, he lived from 1916 to 2004. They met at Cambridge University. They were very interested in this genetic process. They were genetic scientists themselves. And they were out to discover what was it in the, uh, in the cell that permitted these genes to be passed on. They discovered DNA and they made a model of it in 1953. They also won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for their work. Okay, next comes Louis Pasteur. He lived from 1822 to 1895. And he came to the conclusion that microbes, uh, these little cellular pro uh, bacteria and things, were causing diseases and illnesses and killing thousands and thousands of people. And so he's credited with the germ theory for discovering that. He's also the one that came up with pasteurization, uh, named after himself. I think the name came later after he died, but it's the process of heating wine or milk and other substances to kill the microbes in the substances before we are, we are consuming them. He also, during his time, the silkworm population was dying because of a certain bacteria in their populations, and he was able to discover that as well and uh, curb the, um, the bacteria infections of those silkworms. Uh, then, of course, he came up with vaccinations, and his first study was on cattle uh, with anthrax, he realized that if you gave a light, mild dose of the disease itself uh, prior to an organism coming in contact, it would build up its own immunity. His first human uh, vaccination was rabies in 1885, uh, which prevented people from dying from uh, rabies. Uh, next on the scene comes Alexander, Alexander Fleming in 1881 to 1995. Uh, he was the one that uh, came up with penicillin, and that was in 1828. And uh, at the time, they were using antiseptic for topical uh, ways to clean wounds and things, but it wasn't keeping people from getting ill from the infections. Uh, and so he developed penicillin as a mistake in the lab when he realized a mold was actually growing on some of his dirty Petri dishes that was keeping the bacteria in the Petri dish from growing. And so it later got more developed and refined and helped lots of people in the World War II. Okay, next on the scene uh, comes uh, Jonas Salk from 1914 to 1995. Now in, here we go, I couldn't make it again, so we're gonna keep on going, guys. In 1953, he came up with a vaccine for polio. Uh, the actual disease itself is polio myelitis. And uh, prior to his discovery of the polio vaccine, hundreds of thousands of cases were seen every single year all across the world. And in 2017, only 22 cases were identified of polio, which were mutations of the original strain. Now, uh, all developed countries today are, uh, basically they've wiped out the polio and we only see it in small amounts in undeveloped countries. Uh, now in 1867 and 1934, Marie Curie, she was uh, born in Poland and became a F French naturalized citizen. She was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize and she actually won it twice. Now her and her husband were very involved in the discovery of radioactive material. She is credited with finding polonium and radium. And uh, she was the one that developed radiation and discovery of x-rays. Now she herself died at an early age of cancer due to self-exposure as she was experimenting with radiation. Um, we later realized that overexposure to radiation was not a good thing. Uh, then comes Edith Quimbley in 1891 to 1982. She was an Amer American medical researcher. Uh, she is one of the founders of, uh, of nuclear medicine. And she is credited with uh, finding that radiation can actually treat and cure cancer. And she is also the one that is credited with figuring out a way to determine the amount of exposure that people should receive uh, with radiation for um, diagnosing people with diseases or diagnosing people with x-rays. Uh, for protecting the workers around the x-rays as well as the patients receiving those x-rays. So Edith Quimbley is responsible for that. Next comes George Washington Carver. He is the most famous African-American scientist of all time. He lived from 1865 to 1943 and he was a botanist and inventor and he was truly interested in agricultural methods. He came to the conclusion that uh, overproduction of cotton year after year in the same fields was depleting the soil of its nutrients 
And so he came up with the idea of crop rotation. His two primary uh, um, types of plants to crop rotate were sweet potatoes and peanuts. And they were replenished the soil, preventing it from becoming depleted of all nutrients for the cotton. Uh, next on the scene comes Elena or Ellen Ocha. Uh, 1958 to present. She was the first Hispanic astronaut and her first flight in space was 1991. She has since flown additional missions. She's had four missions in space and she currently serves as the 11th director of the Johnson Space Center. So she is, uh, uh, you know, one of the uh, big Hispanic scientists on the scene and still is alive today working at the Johnson Space Center. Woo! Okay, we didn't quite make it five minutes. We oh, didn't continue the timer, so I don't know how long this video lasted. But I hope that you enjoyed uh, the things that we said here. Uh, there are additional scientists that uh, are probably worthy of looking at. But I feel like the ones that I've mentioned in this video, the likelihood of you getting a science question in your test is pretty slim. But the ones I mentioned in this video would primarily be the ones that would be of most interest to you as you're preparing for your exam. So I appreciate you again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell or, or hit the notification bell. That will allow you to uh, be updated of future videos. And again, thank you for watching. Please comment below. Let me know how this is working. We'll see you again on uh, the next episode of Mr. Hayes' YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.